What's up guys, it is Ash Josh Season, and I wanna welcome you guys to the official BMW K1600 bagger review video. So I wanna give a special shout out to the guys over at Earth Seaver BMW. They've actually let us take this motorcycle out for the past few days. We did the first ride and review video and now we've ridden it for a few hundred miles and I wanna give you the official review video on what we think about the engine, the suspension, the transmission, the ergonomics and our overall opinion of this motorcycle. We get into all of that and more right after this. All right, guys. Well, here we have it. We are on the brand new BMW K1600 bagger. And as I'm sure you guys could see from the thumbnail, this is kind of the modern version of BMW's K1600 platform that they released a few years ago. And then in 2022, they launched the updated bagger version of this motorcycle. So some of the differentiations between the bagger motorcycle and the already very popular K1600, uh, the bagger is going to come in at a little bit shorter of suspension. It's going to have some additional pretty aggressive, um, kind of cool modern color schemes. And probably the biggest difference is that they included the word bagger in it. So um, this is obviously BMW's motorcycle that is meant to compete with the bagger market. So think Harley Davidson street glides, road glides, uh, some of the Indian baggers and things of that nature. So traditionally the K1600 was going to be a bike that went up against Honda's Goldwing motorcycle. And it seems like now BMW is interested in kind of taking on the bagger world. Um, certainly has been made evident from BMW's even launch of their R18 bagger and those type motorcycles and they're kind of using this bagger word. So as somebody who has had a lot of experience coming from the bagger motorcycle world, some I've owned a few different baggers, I was curious to get on this motorcycle and see well, how it kind of stacks up against those bikes. So um, yeah, we're going to get into some of that and a lot more. But first things first, I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Irv Seaver BMW here in Southern California for letting me take this motorcycle out for a few different days. As you guys have probably seen on the channel, we launched a first impression of this motorcycle and now having ridden it for a couple hundred miles, I have some thoughts of, you know, actually having ridden the motorcycle for a bit and can kind of talk through some of that stuff. So thanks to the guys over at Irv Seaver BMW. If you guys are in the Southern California region, be sure to go check them out. Give them a hauler. I will link to their website in the description down below. So the first things first that you notice in this motorcycle that is unique that I don't believe any other bagger motorcycle has on the market is its behemoth six cylinder engine. You heard that right. This thing has a six cylinder. Basically it has a car engine in it um, and it has, I believe 160 horsepower. <laughs> and as you can see about 130 foot pounds of torque uh, the bike i mean for lack of a better term is an absolute rocket um, no it's not going to be as fast as say a super bike or a naked bike or something like that but it is darn quick especially when you look at it through the lens of bagger motorcycles it is to me and i think the fastest uh most torquey bagger touring bike on the market i mean this thing really is very very aggressive we've taken this thing as you guys have seen if you watch the other video um down highway roads we've taken it um, on mountain roads kind of through twisty canyons and the bike i mean really and we'll get into this a little bit more uh in the video acts more like a sport touring motorcycle than a big behemoth touring bagger bike uh, that it is classified in which i was i mean honestly pleasantly surprised getting onto this bike i thought you know hey it's just going to be a bike that goes straight in a straight line uh, really really good and while it does do that to some effect it 
has the pep um, to really keep up with a lot lighter motorcycles that are in its class. So it's going to come in at a curb weight of around 750 pounds. So it's not the lightest of motorcycles, but when you look at it through the lens of baggers and things like that, it's actually on the lighter side. Um, plenty of bagger motorcycles are north of 800 pounds. So BMW did a significant job in shaving some weight on this motorcycle. So um, some things that you'll probably notice this huge 10.25 inch TFT display in front of us. Um, we'll get into the electronics a little bit later, but one of the things that you notice here is it redlines at about 9,000 RPMs. I mean, and, and I'll say <laughs> up in those higher RPMs, the six cylinder engine really just screams. It, it, it sounds so good. It is uncharacteristic. You wouldn't think it was going to sound as good as it does um, from a stock BMW motorcycle, but it really does. And you can tell that BMW really focused on the performance of this bike as well as uh, the comfort and the ergonomics and all of that kind of thing. Well, we'll get into the transmission a little bit and just um, the actual drivetrain of this motorcycle. So something very, very unique, especially in the bagger class, is this bike is shaft driven. It has the BMW final drive, very similar to the um, very popular GS 1250 platforms. And so um, it does not have a belt. It does not have a chain. It has a fully enclosed final drive, um, which certainly is nice for reliability and just long-term rides. You really don't have to do much maintenance on these. You don't have to worry about lubing a chain or tightening a belt or anything like that um, so that's a huge plus and then as you get into suspension I mean as you guys can probably tell this thing is just posh I mean the suspension is buttery it's everything you would want it to be from a six-cylinder uh, $25,000 touring motorcycle and to me I think um, having ridden um, a bunch of different kinds of touring bikes we're gonna get past this loud car here um, it to me, this has the best suspension in all of the touring bikes that we have reviewed here on the channel and bikes that I have reviewed personally. So one also one thing that I really like about the suspension is um, it's fully adjustable and so you can change it on the fly from uh, kind of cruiser mode to a more dynamic ride mode to where uh, the bike stiffens up the suspension if you want to go around the twisties and have some fun with this motorcycle. It certainly has that capability and that more dynamic suspension mode um, just gets a lot more stiff and responsive and you can feel the road kind of underneath you. So that's a huge plus on this motorcycle. And yeah, I mean, this bike literally has every bell and whistle that you could possibly throw at it. And Loud Car has found its way in front of me once again. Let's see if we can't leave this guy in the dust. <laughs> Which we certainly can with this six-cylinder torquey engine. Sorry, too much fun. All right. Well, before we get into a lot more on this motorcycle, I wanted to let you guys know of something that is exciting to me. Um, we have officially launched Ride Motos. Ride Motos is a brand new motorcycle content hub and platform for all of your motorcycle reviews, content, rides, community, all that kind of thing. And so we have the new website launched at www.ridemotos.com. Please go check it out. Follow us on social media. That is at Ride Motos Official. And we actually have a brand new YouTube channel where we're going to be bringing content exactly like this onto it on a more regular basis. Um, and yeah, it... I'm really excited about it. This has been a project that has been uh, about five years in the making now. So we officially have all the platforms and everything we need. And if you are a content creator yourself and wanting a platform that you can publish content onto, go to ridemotos.com. There is an intake form where you can submit your articles, your reviews, and all of that kind of stuff for a chance to get published on our content platform. So next we're gonna talk a little bit about ergonomics and as you guys can probably guess, the ergonomics on this motorcycle are 
pretty much darn near perfect. Um, I am five foot ten. I sit with a 30 inch inseam. Um, the bike has mid controls, and as you can see, uh, my rider's triangle here is very, very comfortable. Um, when I sit upright, um, I'm basically, I mean, completely perpendicular to the bike, so my back is going straight up and down. I don't feel like I'm leaning back or leaning forward, so BMW did a really good job with the amount of pullback on these bars, which I admit looks a little weird when you're not on the bike, but when you're sitting on this bike and just going long distances, um, the bike really is very, very comfortable. The seat is probably one of the poshest seats in all of motorcycling. Um, that is something that is going to be a little bit different from the K1600 to the 1600 Bagger. I've noticed this this kind of quilted design. Uh, for me, I like the design of the seat on the Bagger more than I do um, on the K1600 or 1600 GTL. Um, but interested to hear what you guys think about that. But it is very uh, squishy and comfortable. And I could say after about 200 miles or so that we did a few days ago, I didn't feel like there were any hot spots or anything like that, which have been kind of common problems um, with some other motorcycle manufacturers. So ergonomics are good. The one thing, and this is uh, one of my main knocks about this motorcycle, and I feel like we have to talk about it a little bit. I've noticed and I've done some research, and it seems like uh, it's somewhat of a common problem because other people have noticed it as well, is when this motorcycle is going down the highway, say, 70 75 miles an hour and you're just in six gear and you're just going in a straight line which arguably is what this motorcycle should be designed to do um, there is a little bit of i don't know whether you call it wander and weave or squirreliness uh, the bike just doesn't feel super planted um, and it doesn't happen all the time i don't know what the actual causes of it um, but the bike just kind of wants to do this a little bit uh, from side to side and the first time i felt it I, I mean i literally thought i was going crazy i was like no nah, i'm gonna ignore this um, and just see you know if i can get over it maybe it was just you know something way i was riding or lines in the road something like that so i ignored it rode on for another couple hundred miles or so and it kind of continued um not a complete deal breaker for me um like i wouldn't not buy this motorcycle over it but it is something to know going into this bike i have talked to some people at bmw and they've said that this problem is actually specific to the baggers um and this doesn't this motorcycle doesn't have the same problem um in the k1600 regular lineup so not sure if it has to do with the tire they chose on this motorcycle um just the ergonomics or the aerodynamics of the bike um but that problem is there on the bike which is interesting to me um because one thing i will say about the harley davidson bagger lineup or indian for that matter or any of the other guys is when you're going down the highway which arguably is what these motorcycles are designed to do um, the bikes feel very very planted and they feel like they want to go in a straight line almost with ease i mean you really don't have to think about it a lot so um i don't know if it's just how sporty they kind of design this motorcycle to be that it, it is light in the turns and easy to accelerate and all those types of things or it might have to do with the weight of the motorcycle because you have six cylinders kind of sitting up high plus a big old gas tank um whereas you know on the harley davidson motorcycles your v-twin engine is going to be sitting a little bit lower with the cylinder heads kind of at more opposing angles than say this inline six um not sure but it is something worth considering if you were considering buying this motorcycle because as this bike sits at right around twenty-seven thousand dollars, you should get everything you want and more out of a bike this premium um, and speaking of things that are premium we are going to transition and talking about the electronics of this motorcycle so we can't go over everything it's literally i mean this bike is loaded it is absolutely loaded with electronics i mean this thing you name it it has it on there um but first things first since it is the most visible we'll talk about the tft display um as well as this windshield here so the windshield believe it or not is electronic so this button right here on uh, your handles you are simply going to press it down and the whole windshield is going to lower by itself that's crazy um, and when the windshield is lowered um, you get a good amount of breeze that'll hit your upper chest uh, to visor um, so it is a nice change of pace especially if you're at slow speeds and not needing all of that wind protection and if you're going at faster speeds which we're about to do i think the speed limit here is 55 miles an hour um, you just simply press this button windshield raises up and it kicks 
almost all of the wind off you. I do feel it hitting me just in the very, very top of the helmet here. Um, and again, I'm five foot ten, so if you're a taller rider, you're going to feel it a little more. But if you're a shorter rider, chances are the wind is going to kick up over you completely. And one thing that I will say, and I was concerned about this when I heard about the windshield that raises all the way up, was is if there was going to be a good amount of buffeting in the cockpit here that was going to happen as a result of this really tall windshield. Um, we've gone faster than we should have gone on this motorcycle over the past couple days, and I could say there is almost no buffeting and if you want to you can actually open up these little vents down here and let some additional air into you which is going to help to reduce that negative pressure that builds up here and any buffeting that you might have um, the motorcycle has a quick shifter up and down it is one of the smoothest quick shifters that i have used uh, so it has that going for it and then obviously this 10.25 inch tft display which bmw is using in a few of their different motorcycles right now we've covered it in some of our past review videos but i mean literally this thing has a split screen where you can view <clears throat> your trip computer, your onboard computer. Uh, you can look at if you have any music playing or navigation or anything like that. You can get phone calls up here. Um, that is all here on this big behemoth display. And then every single thing under the sun. I mean, this bike has heated grips, heated seat, which work pretty well. Um, used them a few days ago, put them to a two setting. Um, really, really easy. It has central locking for all of your hardware and bags on the motorcycle. And what else? Um, okay, it has big speakers here. Um, okay, speakers. I know that's a, a bit of a polarizing topic on motorcycles on whether or not you should be listening to blaring loud speakers um, coming out of your motorcycle. I'll say <clears throat> that regardless of how you feel about speakers themselves, these speakers I haven't found are all that loud. So coming from the Harley Davidson world, um, the new road glides and things like that, they have decent speakers. I mean, they are, you can go 65, 70 miles an hour and you could be that annoying guy if you want to. Uh, and listen to music while you're going down the road. These speakers that the BMW comes with, um, I didn't feel like were loud enough going past maybe 40 or 45 miles an hour with the volume turned all the way up uh, to be able to reasonably hear the speakers um, with this full face helmet that I have on. So not sure um, how nice it is or practically when you would ever use that. Um, maybe would have rather seen something else like additional storage options up there or something like that the BMW would have thrown instead of putting speakers here because um, I just don't feel like I would use them all that much um, but excited to hear what you guys have to think about that drop a comment down below if you are a speaker person or if you hate those people that blare their music while going down the road and let everybody know what they are listening to so yeah I mean this bike has truly every single bell and whistle that you can think on the motorcycle but it should I mean BMW designed this motorcycle as a very very premium bike a uh, bike that is meant to compete against the Honda Goldwing against other bagger motorcycles. I would put this motorcycle, even though I know it's a little bit different in the class of competing with like a Harley Davidson Road Glide CVO or the Street Glide CVOs or the Ultras or something like that, uh, certainly competes against the Goldwing, but I feel like this bike has so much more power and sportiness that the Goldwing really lacks in. So um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, and you know, as, as I was kind of taking this motorcycle out a few days ago, one of the things that I really just started to think about was who is the ideal person for a motorcycle like this? Um, who would buy this bike? Obviously, when I came into this, I thought, all right, the person that wants to buy this motorcycle is somebody who's going to want to go across the country and do so very, very comfortably. And while this motorcycle can do that in spades and much more, as I took this motorcycle through some canyons and twisties, uh, in fact, we'll cut to some video content right here where I kind of go through some of the canyons and twisties.
so after that, it was after that specific kind of route um, that I kind of started to think, maybe this motorcycle isn't just a full touring motorcycle. Maybe this bike, and I think I'm, I've landed on this, is more in the sport touring world. And I know that sounds crazy for a bike that is as posh and big, and it's a six cylinder engine and all of that, but the motorcycle really is peppy, it's alive, there's a ton of torque on the bike, and it feels sporty. Um, it feels like it kind of wants to rip through the canyons with ease. And I think, you know, there's, to me, there's better motorcycles to go all the way across the country on if I wanted to. Um, and there are better motorcycles uh, to rip through canyons, whether it be naked bikes or super bikes or something like that. But you're not going to find a more comfortable motorcycle to go rip through canyons and turns than you are this K1600 bagger motorcycle, which I know sounds ridiculous. Um, and this bike, don't get me wrong, can go across the country and you will be very, very comfortable doing so. But I just feel like this bike is to me on the more comfortable end of the sport touring lineup. So um, I guess the person that this motorcycle would be for um, would be for somebody that wants a lot of comfort, and I'm talking a lot of comfort, wants all the bells and whistles on a motorcycle, um, but wants something that really has some character, some grunt, um, some ability to rip around the canyons if you wanted to. And something else that I think is worth considering on this motorcycle, um, we took this bike out to a local biker bar that was about 150 miles away out in Anza Borrego State Park called Josie's Hideout. And the biker bar is a pretty popular spot for old school bagger people and Harley riders and all of this. So I specifically wanted to take this motorcycle there to see what the people would think about this motorcycle and if it would gain any attention at all. And I can say I have never ridden a motorcycle that has gotten as much attention at a biker bar as this motorcycle did. Seriously, probably 15 different people stopped, looked at this bike, had questions, and so I think the people that are gonna want this bike are gonna be people that are already into baggers, are already into touring, that want something a little more luxurious, that want suspension that's a little bit better, want all the bells and whistles of all of the electronics that the motorcycle is gonna have to offer. Um, like I said, I've never seen a bike that has gotten as much attention as this, so BMW has done a good job of just making waves and entering in a new motorcycle market. Um, maybe the Harley-Davidson Pan America made similar waves and just attention when it entered into the adventure market, um, but I am surprised to see this motorcycle. And honestly, I mean, I know I kind of knocked the, its ability to track in a straight line, um, <laughs> but this bike really is a lot of fun, kind of going through the twisties here. Um, it has enough power to power you through any turn regardless of really what gear you're in. Um, the brakes feel pretty responsive uh, for how heavy of a motorcycle it is. I don't feel like they're lacking or um, soft in any way. And I'll say for like most people, this bike is going to be ridiculously premium. Um, as I've been riding this motorcycle for a couple days, um, one of the words that kind of keeps on coming into my brain over and over again when I'm trying to describe this motorcycle and just the overall, my overall opinion of the bike is interesting. It's, it's more sporty than I thought this motorcycle was going to be. I thought it was just basically going to be a couch on wheels. This bike certainly has the ability to come alive through the corners. It has just crazy acceleration. Um, but it's also interesting that it is not kind of the touring machine that I maybe thought it was going to be. And there might be other motorcycles that I would consider if I was going to go across the country. Um, and interesting because it has a lot more creature comforts and technology that um, I never really thought I needed. Like, for instance, these mirrors and just, I know it's not really technology, but look how stinking big the mirrors are. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous and your field of view on it is really, really impressive. Um, the ergonomics on it feel super, super nice. The bike feels planted. It's nice to have central locking on the motorcycle. So when you walk away, you just press a button and your panniers or saddlebags are completely locked. Um, all of those things add up to a very premium feeling motorcycle. Um, that to me, if you're in the 
world of baggers and you're looking for a touring bike um, for the amount of money that this motorcycle costs again coming in I think as it, this one's built right around twenty seven thousand uh, dollars you are not gonna beat the price for what you're getting and the amount of stuff that you get all of the bells and whistles the torque the six cylinder engine the posh seat everything like that it really is a phenomenal value for the money I mean for a motorcycle that comes this loaded with technology on Harley Davidson you're gonna pay upwards of forty thousand dollars to be in a CVO motorcycle or something like that um, so I think it's certainly a bargain I, I think for the the price that you're gonna pay for this motorcycle um, you're not you're, you're gonna be hard-pressed to find a better value which is crazy because when you think of BMW or certainly when I think of BMW you think very very premium motorcycles uh, that are certainly gonna be on the higher end of the price point but at least in this bagger touring lineup um, I think this is a really good deal for the price uh, that you're gonna pay if you're in the market for say uh, a motorcycle in the, the 20 to thirty thousand dollar range uh, which I know isn't for everybody but for those that are in that range I think this is really interesting um, one thing is for sure on this motorcycle you're not gonna get a lot of other bikes that turn more heads than this motorcycle does um, this thing really I mean every single person that is in the bagger community or touring motorcycle community doesn't just look at this bike they stop they look at it they ask questions they're curious they want to know more about it so I think BMW certainly has scratched an itch here uh, the design of this bike and how futuristic it feels is really really interesting the engine and everything they've done I mean hats off to BMW for making such a peppy such an alive motorcycle uh, so yeah those those are my thoughts of this BMW K1600 bagger motorcycle hope you guys have enjoyed the video and as i mentioned go give ride motos a follow all right guys well there you have it there is the official bmw k1600 review video and as i mentioned in the video you know this this motorcycle is interesting it wasn't what i thought the motorcycle was going to be there's some pros there's some cons honestly the bike was more peppy and alive than i thought it was going to be it handles in the canyons exceptionally well and whether or not that is your thing is gonna be up to you. It is interesting to see that while there are a lot of great things about this motorcycle, there are some areas that the bike does fall short on. Some of that has to do with the weight distribution. Some of that has to do with just how well the motorcycle tracks in a straight line. Those are things that you're gonna to have to make a decision for yourself on whether or not it's worth it, especially when you are spending as much as these motorcycles. I mean, this is at the very, very top of what is considered premium touring motorcycles and whether those things are important to you. So I'm very curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are. Go ahead and leave me a comment down below. Please like the video, give us a subscribe on the channel. That helps out more than you know. We are dropping videos every Mondays and Fridays of every week and be sure to go check out our new channel that is Ride Motos. You can find us at www.ridemotos.com or on YouTube or Instagram at Ride Motos Official. Thank you guys so much for coming along for the journey. Till we meet again, peace.